Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I got a top 5 video for you guys, a really cool lore video, but today is a very special day. Today is the 10 year anniversary of Grand Theft Auto 5, and for this day I wanted to do a lore video. I wanted to do a top 5 since I hadn't done one in some time, and I was thinking what can I do? And I was thinking why don't I do top 5 smartest things that Trevor has done? Now a lot of people think that Trevor is stupid, but even though he does a lot of insane things, he is actually pretty smart in a lot of instances, and this video is going to be highlighting that. It's not going to be highlighting things where he's taking orders from somebody like Lester, but instead when he actually plans something out on his own, and he actually does something on his own. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Top 5 smartest things that Trevor has done. But before we start, let's talk about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is a Trey Volo U Bluetooth speaker created by Ben Q, and this is the best Bluetooth speaker that I have ever used. I will link their website page and also their Amazon link down below so that you guys can check them out. Now what's unique about this speaker is that this speaker has three different modes, music, video learning, and live learning. And it also has a voice recognition software in which you can actually tell the speaker to increase the volume or decrease the volume and also to change the different modes. It can be plugged into any kind of wall outlet through its USB cable, very simple to charge. And take a look at this right here guys, I'll show you this, this speaker on its three different modes. So let's start off right here with one of my favorite video games, GTA Liberty City Stories. By the way, the speaker is also compatible with both Android and iPhone phones. So we're doing here video learning. Video learning mode, this provides the best vocal quality for online learning and for also listening to videos and possibly movies and even cutscenes and games. Let's take a listen to Salvatore here. Hey. So listen, Tony, I know you did a good thing first. I know you've been lying low for a long time. So I want you to take it easy for a while, huh? Vincenzo will look after you. You need some money? Ask him. You need a job? Lucky he'll take care of you. What more could a family guy ask for? Even my son done got it so good. But, Mr. Hey, Leone, Trado. I thought we got... Volume up. I've done a lot for this family. And now you're expecting me to take orders from this... 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 Well, it just doesn't seem right. Tony, I know what you did, and no one is more grateful than me. Honestly. But the idea that you walk in here and start to question my leadership right away is... What I love is how I can just increase and decrease the volume just through simple voice commands. But now, let's take a listen to music. Music mode provides the best balanced sound quality for music and entertainment. Hey, Trado. Switch to music mode. <laughs> I saw you walking past and saw you shake your ass Boy, I like your I just love listening to the Liberty City Stories radio on this speaker. And lastly here, we have live learning mode. Live learning mode, it provides a smart echo control for the best microphone performance and it's the best vocal quality. This is for when you're trying to listen to somebody, when you're trying to listen to somebody on a live stream or a podcast, when you're just listening to one voice specifically, that is what live learning mode is great for. And what I found it great for is for some of my guides. If you guys check out my GTA online guides, live learning mode would actually be really good here. Hey, Trado. Switch to live learning mode. Stores, as you can see, I had gotten this at a barber shop. So I'm assuming this can happen to a lot of other stores, not just convenience stores. So convenience stores, I've, I've seen it happen to, and I've seen it happen to barber shops, but I got a good Samaritan bonus. There are awards for this, but, you know, that's just basically an award um, that you get for b being a good Samaritan. And then, you know, here I had, you know, second instance also later on. And these events for people wondering, these are extremely rare, like very, very rare. Like I spent hours in this session driving around and I finally had it spawn. So I wanted to, you know, try this event at least one more time in this video. But 
just make sure that you switch between the different modes depending on if the video um, goes from, you know, for example, just voice to music for obviously the best sound quality. But this is an awesome speaker and for just the size of it, I was very surprised the quality. But make sure to please check out the Trey Volo U speaker. I will again have their Amazon page and their BenQ's official website link down below. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Starting off at number 5 is figuring out that there is something valuable to steal at the docks. So Trevor actually does his research and through Wade finds out that Floyd works at the docks and he questions Floyd about this and then later on provides them with uniforms. Yes, I work at the docks. And? Anything uh, interesting there for a man like me? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't rightly... rightly know. What kind of person are you? Oh, I'm that kind of person, Floyd. I am that kind of person. Now, let's get you, Wade, and that little tormentor down there to put these on. We are going for a ride. Gentlemen, the gateway to America awaits. Run. we got an inside man at the port of LS. I'm going to send you some information. I need you on point to help plan things. I got it, team. Trevor realizes that the docks are valuable and actually knows how much money the docks actually bring in every single year into Los Santos. Come on then, Floyd, what you got for me? Like I said, I don't rightly know what we got. You're going to have to be more exact in your questioning, sir. Uh, we're looking for something to steal. Sir. I stole a pencil in elementary school, and I've been regretting it ever since. Boy, go always work a stick in the mud. Uh, look, sir, please, just tell me what you want, and I'll do my utmost to assist you in finding it. Here's the problem. I don't know what I want. It's a bit, well, like pornography or a perfect turn. I can't quite describe it, but I'll know it when I see it. You ain't aiding my comprehension. All right, all right. Well, how's this? $236 billion worth of cargo came through the port of Los Santos last year. He's real good with numbers. I don't want to hijack a truck full of pineapples, Floyd. You need to give us the inside track on what's coming through. We don't know what's in the containers. They certainly don't put brass tags on them. Have you noticed anything? Anything different? Anything that might indicate something? Well, there's been all these uh, Meriwether folks hanging around. Meriwether security consultant. Private army to the New World Order. My butt's gone The now. folks waging outsourced shadow wars in 20 countries around the globe and recently cleared to operate on U.S. soil. That, um, sounds like them. So there's a private militia in the port. What are they guarding? This one freighter? I guess now that you mention it, it ain't quite right. A freighter. Perfect. Can I get on board? No, no. They won't let you anywhere near it. They're kind of assholes about it, actually. The other day, my colleague Ralph... I don't give a shit about Ralph. We gotta take a look. Is there anything else? There's another bunch of Meriwether guys out by the Navy warehouse. They got boats coming in and out. I heard they was testing something. All right, we'll take a look at that as well. This shows you that even though Trevor is insane, when he actually puts his mind to it and he calculates stuff, he can get things done. And he even asks about the kind of response that this, these docs have. You gonna take me to see this freighter? Yeah, it's over here. You ever get helicopters coming in and out of here? You know, those big sky crane things that could pick up a whole container? Now, this is restricted airspace. They won't let anything out of here without clearance. They'll shoot it down if they have to. So how's a man in a hurry supposed to get in and out of this place? Well, we got a port that stretched to 50 feet. Now, what's the Coast Guard response like? Well, they got cutters, 45-foot response vessels, air support. You're not gonna move much faster than them, especially if you're carrying something. Maybe I'll have to saddle you up and ride you across the Miriam Turner overpass. I just said they have the water surface real covered. Okay. That is the freighter I told you about. What do you think they got on it? We just stevedore them. We ain't meant to know what's in the containers. But? But these are marked military. Government. Anything weird about that? The government stuff is hot freight. 
Pulls up, goes right through. This stuff's just been sitting here. You are beginning to arouse my curiosity. Trevor finds out about Merriweather at this docks. They're protecting some type of top container there. He is um, scouting the port, pretends to be a dock worker, goes up top, takes pictures. A lot of people actually dislike this mission, say it's one of the worst missions in the game, but I actually think it's one of the best missions in the game. It's one of my favorite ones because it actually does feel like you're infiltrating the docks. It does feel like you're getting information about it. He later finds out from Floyd that there is actually a warehouse with more Merriweather personnel there. It's on the other side of Port City. So they've been guarding one of them dry docks. We can take a look at it, but no one's allowed around there. Normal rules don't apply to us, Floyd. We're going in. Hey, 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 hey. You can't come through here. It's restricted access. No entiendo. No understando. Huh? Manifesto. Manifesto say deliver here. Hey, stop. Where the fuck you think you're going? God don't speak English. Uh, must have just read the manifesto. He said, he said, no, Now, the reason that this is actually not higher on the list is because even though Trevor was very smart in how he approached the docks, how he got information, how he got all the in information together, the equipment, the submarine, the helicopter, etc., what was actually stupid here was that he did not contact Lester and he did not do more research about what he was stealing. The only thing he found out was that Meriwether was protecting some kind of powerful weapon, did not bother to research that it was actually a nuclear weapon that they had, and then he had to end up giving it back. So this actually would have been much higher up on the list if he actually did his research and the heist it actually did not go the way that it did in the end. Next at number four, we have taking Mr. K to the airport, not home. Now, I released a lore video about Mr. K two weeks ago, a really cool one. I will I will link it at the end if you guys want to check it out. But basically, to summarize, Mr. K was an innocent man that was kidnapped by the government. Um, he had installed cinema equipment at a possible terrorist's house, and so they were torturing this innocent guy to get information out of him, and it was just a complete disaster. But anyways... Trevor actually knows that Mr. K is actually innocent. The only reason he's torturing Mr. K, even though he knows he's innocent, is because he is hoping that the government will release Brad, who he still thinks that is, is alive. Now, if Trevor accidentally kills Mr. K, he actually reveals that he actually knows that he's innocent. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Forget it. He's fucking dead. Poor bastard. You are a fucking moron. I just spent the past few hours torturing a seemingly innocent guy to death, and I don't even know why I did it. So does that make me a fucking moron? You're going down, punk. At the exact moment I get bored with you, your little racket will end. Yeah. You love those fucking tough guy lines, don't you, huh? Fuck you. So why is it smart that Trevor actually takes Mr. K to the airport and not home? Couldn't he have just taken Mr. K to his family like he wanted? Together. I want to go home. I want to see my family. No, 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 no. You have no home. You have no family. That shit is over. I do. They're in the morning wood. I love them very much. No, that's your old life. That's over now. You're off the grid. You're one of the invisible people. Just take me home. I'm taking you to the airport. You're gonna get on a plane. You're flying a long way from this country and you're gonna spread your message. I don't have a message. You're a torture advocate. Advocate? The media and the government would have us believe that torture is some necessary thing. We need it to get information, to assert ourselves. Did we get any information out of you? I would have told you everything. Exactly. Tortures for the torturer or the guy giving the order to the torturer. You torture for the good times. We should all admit that. It's useless as a means of getting information. I'm feeling lightheaded. Sometimes you torture for the torturee, but only if they're prepared to pay. 
I am very unwell. It's me, 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 me with you. Jesus Christ, good grief. I thought we really bonded, but now I'm having my doubts. Departures. No one drives me to the airport. Run. You're free. Oh, what? But my family is here. Your family is probably the ones who got you fucking in here, all right? And look, trust no one, all right? You're alone now. Really? Yeah, really. Now let's go. Fuck off. Come on. The reason Trevor actually does not take Mr. K home to his family, but instead takes him to the airport, is because Steve Haynes has shown that he's going to get rid of all loose ends. Steve Haynes was on the phone, right next to Trevor, in which he actually said the first house that Mr. K gave them, that was the wrong house, he said, why don't we just kill everybody to make sure? I'll call Steve. Wrong house. This guy isn't our guy. Okay, okay, okay. You sure you don't silence him, just to make sure? If we're silencing someone, we're silencing the right someone. Get me another address. Then he also said, why don't we just drop an airstrike on Chumash Beach and kill everyone there? No, no. I'm telling you the truth. she beard? Got any beardy types at this party? Huh? Because that's all Mr. K's given us. No. You know, I'm thinking maybe we ought to just take two bullets and put them in our uniform and just call an airstrike on Chumash Beach. Trevor knew that if he dropped Mr. K off at his house, Steve Haynes would find out about it and Steve Haynes would go over there and would kill Mr. K and his entire family. So by Trevor actually taking him to the airport where he gets on a plane, gets very far away, Mr. K is safe from Steve Haynes. And then when Steve Haynes dies later in the story, Mr. K can safely go back to his family. Dave Norton is probably not going to care about that. So he actually saved Mr. K's life by taking him to the airport and not home. At number three, we have attacking the lost MC during a thunderstorm at night. So in the mission Friends Reunited, Trevor is going to Los Santos. But before he decides to go to Los Santos, he finds out that another chapter of the Lost has actually arrived at Stab City, and he decides to take care of them. Now, while it was stupid that Trevor did start a war with the Lost in the first place, Trevor does understand something better than a lot of other characters in the GTA universe do. A lot of the other characters in the GTA universe, what becomes their downfall is that they start a fight that they can't finish in the end. So Trevor understands that that you better not start a fight that you can't finish. But if you do start a fight, make sure you finish it. And Trevor actually does understand that. So in this mission, if you actually start this mission in the daytime and you pull up the Stab City, Trevor will actually say, let's wait until nighttime. Nighttime with the thunderstorm coming in, perfect cover. Another chapter of the loss has arrived, and this is the moment to attack. They're all in one place at once. It's night. The thunder is covering a lot of sounds. They don't expect Trevor to come back anytime soon right now. If Trevor didn't go after them, start taking them out one by one and rig their trailers to explode, they would have eventually come after his business. So even though he would leave to Los Santos, Ron would be dead, Chef would be dead, his meth operations would be completely destroyed. Trevor rigs a bunch of the trailers together. So long! That's the spot! Out here for a pack of balls off! Are you so fucking long? Hello! Nothing likes to fire our party. Let's be more friends. 
It's also important to note that Trevor starts this mission trying to do this quietly, and you can actually do the mission stealth very different than a lot of his other approaches where he actually goes completely loud. Going at night with a suppressor and rigging all their trailers to blow was absolutely genius. And once Trevor actually does this and he actually blows up all the trailers, he actually reveals the Lost will not be bothering them anytime soon. And for the rest of the story in GTA 5, the Lost don't come after Trevor in any more story missions. There are stragglers, random events, where the Lost will go after Trevor, but they don't ever pose a massive threat to Trevor after this. Moving on to number two, we have figuring out that Michael lied about Brad. Actually, it does not sound ridiculous, you know, because you, you're a killer. You know, you are a man of action. You do not sit on couches. You take scores. You're back, man. We are back. All right. All we got to go do is bust out Brad and then we're golden, man. Franklin, he makes us multicultural. Lester makes it cyber. We're like modern America. We just get ourselves a gay friend. Bam! No, it's not it. I got money. It just makes you miserable. I want to make movies. Great. It's great. And uh, so where exactly does this leave me in the second act of your life? We're going to do this last big job, and then we're going to dissolve the partnership. This is not a game to me, all right? This is a fucking way of life. I got a fucking family. Yeah, well, I got nothing. No one gives a fuck about me. I do. Oh, fuck you. I saw your grave. I mourned you. And then it turns out that everything I fucking thought about you was wrong. Everything dead and you're not a man well what the fuck are you i'm your fucking nightmare yeah, enough with your goddamn threats let me let me just ask you something all right something i've been i've been thinking about up in north yankton exactly who was buried in your place? I never gave it any thought. You know what I'm thinking? I had no clue. You treacherous piece of shit! You're fucking dead! You're fucking dead! Oh, fuck. Trevor! Hey! T! So, burying the hatchet is one of the most talked about missions in GTA 5. It's one of the most popular missions in the game. Trevor figures out that Michael was most likely lying about Brad, goes to North Yankton to confirm his suspicions. But what a lot of people don't talk about is how did Trevor come to that conclusion? How did he figure out that Michael was lying in this instance? It was a combination of factors of getting pissed off at Michael thinking, but there was also a lot of hints early on. There's a lot of times where Trevor actually was putting the pieces together in his head. Let's start off with the first moment. In the mission Fame or Shame, this is the second conversation that you get. You only get this conversation if you actually restart the mission a second time, so most people miss it. Trevor asks about Brad, in which Michael immediately tries to change the subject afterwards. Amigo, it's nice to see you and all, but you stink like piss, you got blood under your nails, and you look like you've been up for what, a week? Who the fuck are you to tell me anything? I'm someone who knows you, you fucking slippery snake. I know the second I leave you, you'll just go home. We're gonna get your girl from these assholes. You're not abandoning her like you did me and Brad. Yeah, Brad. Poor motherfucker must have woke up handcuffed to a hospital gurney after that stunt of yours. He still writes to me from the joint, you know. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, how you been doing? Oh, I'm getting by. 
Aside from the loneliness and heartbreak, of course. The other time is in Three's a Company. In this mission, Michael is pulling up with Dave Norton, and Michael tells Dave Norton to get out of here right away. Trevor notices and says, who's that guy? That's a dumb move. Real fucking dumb. Just worry about the plan, okay? Getting Mr. K out of the IAA station. Clinton is going to be positioned across the street, keeping an eye on the proceedings. Phillips flies you in, you rappel down, make the extraction. And I'm the best guy you got for this. With you, we've got good leverage. Great. And you brought Trevor in. We're telling him I'm all cozy with the F5B. You'll need discreet support. We'll maintain control of the situation. Discreet? Control? Yeah, good luck controlling discreet Trevor. Yeah, I wonder how controllable and discreet he'll be when he sees the guy who killed me and put Brad in jail. Maybe I'll hang back. Yeah, that might be a good idea. You know what? You better keep a low profile. Yeah, I think I will. See you later. Who's that cagey motherfucker, huh? No, it's another cagey motherfucker, all right? Not you! Hey, T, enough with the faux political bullshit. Then Trevor, in that exact same mission, brings up Brad once more. Sayonara to the old crew. Walking away ain't easy, Trev. Sometimes I guess you gotta make compromises. What happened to dying with a gun in your hand? Life happened. Annoying wife, two kids. Remember them? You get tied down, you can't move anymore. What about your ties to me? To Brad? Those ties are why you got roped in on this FIB instigated suicide pact. For as long as it keeps me amused, I am. I ain't exactly sure it's gonna be amusing. We'll see. You know, you had me at suicide pack. In the mission by the book, Trevor recognizes Dave Norton. As he's about to figure out Dave Norton was the one who shot Brad, Michael immediately changes the subject. Asshole. You, you back there. I know you, but you? You I don't know. Yeah, well, until I see reason otherwise, why don't we just keep it that way? Steve, what a pleasure, bro. Oh! He <laughs> reminds me of one of those guys you see advertising pills for middle-aged men that can't get erections. <laughs> hey, Devin Weston is a very good friend of mine, so why don't you watch your tongue? Because let me tell you something, that guy gets more tail than, uh... <laughs> than a tail catcher! <laughs> fucking remember that line. <laughs> you, mm. where did we meet? Nowhere, pal. Yeah, we did. Hey, oh, what are we doing here, huh? This. Please, keep this sleep us. Michael actually brings this up to Dave Norton while they're driving, saying that it's only a matter of time until Trevor figures it out. Depot job. You walk your crew into an ambush. One of them spent 10 years on the run, and the other landed in a federal penitentiary. Or, or, we stumbled on the cash depot job, Brad went down, you went down, Trevor got away, the FIB cut you a deal on your sickbed, faked your death, and you end up here. Who's to say which of those is true? That there's any doubt probably accounts for you being alive. Back there, Trevor made you right away, the second he saw you. You remember after the bust, I was in all the papers. I was on the evening news. The man who killed Michael Townley. Yeah, I was quite a trophy. A good head to hang on your wall. Back then, sure. Not now. So basically what happened here is Michael was being very suspicious, very evasive, constantly changing the subject, arguing with Trevor. Trevor put the pieces together, got pissed off, and went out to North Yankton to confirm his suspicion. So it wasn't just a thing that just came out of nowhere in the moment. This was something that was building up in Trevor's head for some time. He was trying to put the pieces together and realize finally, hey, this is the guy who, who shot Brad. If he shot both Brad and Michael, then who's in Michael's grave? That's basically how Trevor came to that assumption. Fuck you! Hey, come on, where you going? You know where I'm going, fuck you! You don't need to go all the way to North Yankton to find out what I can tell you over a couple beers back in my house. Come on, we'll order pizza. Fuck you! Fuck your pizza, fuck everything it stands for! This is insanity! Oh no, no, it's clear and reason thought, finally! Come on, come back, we'll talk! I'm not gonna listen to another one of your lies! Hey, I'll lay it all out for you, everything. Turn around. I'm going up there to see it for myself. You'll be disappointed. 
Oh, I'll be something. It'll be an anti-climax. The grave's empty. Just a bag of sand, something like that. Just smoke and mirrors. Ooh, I'm alive! How do you do it? Man? The game is up! I'm trying to save you a trip. You've done me enough favors, buddy, right? Save your fucking breath! Trevor, come on! Fuck you, Michael! Soon enough, I will. Country. Sure, sure. We got one fueled up for a trip south of the border. I'm taking it. Is everything okay, man? Everything is not okay. Nothing has ever been okay, but I gotta see it for myself. I'm gonna see an old friend, all right? You're where I think you are, buddy. I don't know why I didn't see it. I guess, I guess I didn't want to. Fuck! Maybe I knew all along. I'm gonna find out for sure, and I'm gonna do something about it. There's always something wrong with that job. What went down after, I guess. I guess I wanted to believe fucking... Fucking police circus! Idiot! 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 I'm sorry, Trevor. Hey, you're wasting your time. Is that why you flew out here? Huh? Tell me I'm wasting my time? Go ahead, dig it up. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's what you look like. The guy who doesn't give a shit? That's ridiculous. How long are you gonna keep lying for, Mikey, huh? When's it gonna stop? It happens in the dark. It comes out in the light. I'll oh, give it a rest, Trevor. <laughs> There's nothing there! <sighs> this is it. Moment of truth. <laughs> As if I didn't know. Brad! Look, we do what we gotta do to survive. This thing, it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. Oh, and how was that, huh? With Brad in the can and me in the ground, or, 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 or both of us in the coffin? Brad got shot. You saw it. He didn't make it. I got shot, I did. That's... that's it! I think the only thing that didn't go as planned was me showing up on your doorstep ten years later. Mikey, I mourned you. And I missed you. But I got a fucking family, Trevor. We were all gonna die. He did die. You reptilian motherfucker! I didn't want it to come to this. Yes, you did! You just don't have the fucking balls to do it! But I do! I got more to lose than you! Never a truer word has been spoken, brother! Now pull the fucking trigger! You ain't got the guts. Take the fucking shot! Who is that? Fuck! 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 So when people say that Trevor is stupid, I think a lot of people underestimate that he actually can be very smart at times, and he can actually figure things out on his own. Before I reveal the number one smartest thing that Trevor did, I wanted to make a special mention, and this special mention is seeing right through Deborah. So even though Trevor only met Deborah once in the, for the last time in Hang 10, he actually did correctly predict on the type of person that Deborah was. He despised Deborah. He despised that she was this elitist businesswoman that was traveling around, never at the apartment, left Floyd behind. He destroyed the photo that Deborah actually had in the living room, and he actually warned Floyd and told told Floyd that she doesn't care about him. Rules. And look at you. You're a failure. You're in a loveless relationship. What do you mean, loveless? I love Deborah. If she loved you, she'd be here, wouldn't she? But she's not. Uh, you know I'm insecure. You've got a dead-end job. What? Dead-end? Uh, no. Floyd, it's dead-end. Being a unionized longshoreman's uh, one of the best-paying jobs in the country. You tell people around La Puerta that's what you do, they're liable to rob you. So I'm jealous. 
No one's jealous of you, Floyd. They pity you. You're abused by that woman. You're abused by these slave drivers. I mean, I've never worked so hard in my life. It ain't so bad. Uh, I've been doing this every day for 10 years, only usually with less of the criminality. You're wasting your life, Floyd. It's lucky we turned up when we did. I'm saving you from yourself. When we do first see uh, Deborah, he's actually joking about how Deborah is actually going out and cheating on Floyd. This is home furnishings. Who the F is that, Floyd? No one, my sweet. Hey, by any chance, did you catch crabs at that conference? <laughs> I heard that those conferences are regular little fuck fest, huh? Guy, come in. Huh? I'd like you to leave mm. right now. Oh yeah, some serious corporate gang banging going on, right? Yeah, with every executive and director of communications from here to Bangalore taking it left, right, and center in the name of team training, right? I mean, now that's what Floyd told me yesterday as he was staring at my uh, my penis. He makes Deborah so angry that she actually admits that she's actually cheating on Floyd when she says that Bob was right about you. And you go too, Floyd! I told you! I've got a career! I don't need this! 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 Crap! Yes! There. <laughs> you made me swear. You're crap, Floyd. Crap! <laughs> You're not a man at all. <laughs> Bob's right about you. Oh, who's Bob? I want both of you to go now. You and your weird friend. Whoa! Hey! My name is Trevor, sweetheart. I could give a fuck what your fucking name I'm not afraid to use this. I'm not. Bob taught me. Fuck Bob! You people are not very fucking nice. So Trevor was talking crap about Deborah, but then Deborah admitted to it and he even said, Who's Bob? Trevor put the pieces together. He knew that Deborah was cheating on on Floyd. I have a whole video on Deborah and Floyd if you want to check that out. I'll have that at the end. It's uh, the dark truth about Floyd and Deborah and what really happened at that condo, but she was basically using Floyd and cheating on him and Trevor actually called it out correctly. It was kind of messed up how it ended, but Trevor was smart in that he was able to see the type of person Deborah was without even meeting her. Now that's pretty good. And number one, the number one smartest thing that Trevor did is actually something that a lot of people actually won't expect, which is asking for the other side of the cocaine brick. This fool janky. Courier service. Packets to collect. You got the grip? Present and accounted for. Uh, you like that, huh? Sample? <laughs> now we talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 My throat getting numb already. So we good, nigga, right? Well, let's go. How about a taste? No, man, we leaving. I want a taste of the other side of the brick. Now, you heard what your boy said, you're leaving. Hey, give me, give me the, give me the back. Whoa. What the fuck? Did we ask for a key? Or a fucking ounce! Man, that's motherfucking drywall! Hey, we got some motherfucking buyer's remorse out here! Damn, you can't fucking hustle a hustler! So in the mission Hood Safari, this is the first mission that Franklin and Trevor actually do something on their own without Michael. Trevor is new to Los Santos, he tracks down Franklin, and he wants to hang out with him and Lamar, do some things. Now, Lamar talks about a drug deal in which they're going to be going to Grove Street, buying a cocaine brick from the Balas. Now, you have to remember at this point, is that Trevor has been dealing drugs for years. When I first played this mission, and when most people played this mission, we assumed that the reason that Trevor grabbed the cocaine brick was because he was just insane. But the reality is, the real reason that he grabbed the cocaine brick was he wanted to make sure that Lamar and Franklin were not getting ripped off. Trevor could see a ripoff from a mile away. And you have to remember, Trevor has been dealing drugs for years and years. He's been doing this for much longer than both 
Franklin and Lamar have been doing. And remember the Series A heist. The Series A heist actually happens before the main story in GTA 5. That heist is in the online, where Trevor got, you know, lost all of his drugs due to a police bust. And so he can see something like a ripoff, something bad from a mile away. And that's why he wanted to see the other side of the brick, because he wanted to make sure that it was all actual coke, they actually were not getting ripped off. He saw how Franklin just wanted to rush out, and he saw how ignorant Lamar was being. And that's basically what prompted him to take a look at that brick. There's even a secret phone call that you can get. If you actually switch to Franklin right after this mission, and you actually call up Stretch, then Franklin will actually confront Stretch about the deal. Stretch will get pissed off that they brought Trevor in, saying that he ruined the deal. But Franklin will say that Trevor actually saved us from getting ripped off. I need to speak to you fast. Oh, is that right? Shit, I need to speak to your ass too. What you taking some crazy white dude around the hood for? Huh? Huh? Because that crazy white dude's the only reason why we ain't buy a brick of plaster, motherfucker. He the reason why we still breathe. It look bad, little homie. Man, I don't give a fuck how it look, big homie. Matter of fact, let me ask your ass something. Why you set us up with a motherfucker that try to run a lick on us and clap us any fucking way? That shit was real till you and your geek friend fucked it up. That's on you, punk. And if you want to know how smart Trevor is in this case, even though, yes, he's done a lot of stupid things, remember Vic Vance in Vice City Stories. Now, even though Vic Vance is in the 3D universe, it's another GTA character, Vic Vance is probably the biggest cocaine dealer in the entire GTA series, even more so than Tommy Versetti, because Tommy Versetti really only did one deal once he got out of prison. But Vic has been doing this for at least two years at that point, when Tommy, um, when Tommy Versetti comes to Vice City in 1986. So Vic built a huge amount of his criminal empire on just selling coke alone. And Vic himself, even though he's had a lot of experience with buying and selling cocaine, he actually gets ripped off. There's actually one mission, one side mission in Vice City Stories in which Vic actually buys fake coke, and then he has to go and get it back. If Vic was actually Trevor in this case, Trevor would have been able to see that that coke was fake, so that's why I gotta give credit to Trevor for this, that he was able to see through that deal. First time that I played it, I wasn't able, able to even see that it was fake. I thought maybe they would try to possibly set them up, but I never imagined that the drugs they were actually selling them were possibly fake. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do drop a like. I will try to make more videos like this for you guys. Check out my live stream. I'm going to be doing a live stream in like 30 minutes to an hour after this video. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.